Thank you very much, uh, Joan Gerard and Joan Neal. Uh, he let me know that uh, he is now general and not colonel as he was last time we were together. Uh, it's really, really good to be here, and thank you for that uh, very kind introduction. Uh, I am always honored uh, to be here to speak, and especially today at your 70th annual conference of the National Guard Association of Georgia. Uh, it's always an honor to be in the company of members of our military, uh, those who support our military. Uh, it's a special honor uh, to speak with the members of the Georgia National Guard. You are our citizen soldiers, and you are sacrificing yet another weekend of your personal and your family time to support our great Georgia Guard and our nation. Our military would not be where it is without the support of service organizations like the National Guard Association of Georgia. Uh, thank you for all that you do uh, to support our service members and to support the families. Uh, as you know, our military has been instrumental in building and defending our democracy uh, throughout our nation's history. I'm very appreciative for all that the National Guard Association of Georgia has done and will continue to do to help veterans, service members, their families meet and overcome the challenges of your service. As a member of Congress, I rely on the courageous spirit of all of you to continue to energize me in my duties as we work to maintain and to enhance our commitment to our active duty troops and to those who came before them. Uh, this morning, I thought that I would begin uh, with my thoughts about the current status of our military. Uh, our nation has been engaged in war uh, through the longest period of time since its existence. Uh, this war has been focused primarily in the Middle East and Afghanistan, but unlike in wars past, it does not follow traditional national boundaries. Our forces are engaged with support from our allies in efforts to defeat and to destroy ISIS. However, these deployments are not limited to just that region. As I speak to you today, there are a significant number of soldiers, airmen, Marines, and sailors that are deployed to a myriad of countries around the world right now. The complexities of our military, uh, the complexities that our military now faces are perhaps uh, the most challenging of the past several decades. In addition to the fight against terror, our national defense strategy is continuing to evolve in the face of growing threats from near-peer adversaries, Russia and China, which now pose substantial threats to our national security. Additionally, Iran, North Korea, and numerous other state and foreign actors pose threats to the freedoms that we enjoy. These threats from various actors are becoming increasingly multifaceted. Counterinsurgency and the war on terror continue to be a strong military focus. However, the growing threat of nuclear proliferation and the challenges of cyber attacks pose and they've caused our military to broaden our strategies and, have, and to have increased what we have asked you and our military members to accomplish. Now, the U.S. Constitution explicitly grants Congress the power to raise and support armies to ensure that it stands poised to respond when necessary. Just a few days ago, Congress voted for the fiscal year 2019 National Defense Authorization Act. And when I return next week, we'll begin work on the 2019 Defense Appropriations Bill. I assure you that we're working to ensure that our military remains prepared, equipped, and trained to defeat any enemy that we can face. As a senior member of the Appropriations Committee and former ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee of Military Construction and Veterans Affairs, I will continue to provide robust funding with my colleagues for military construction projects and for veterans' needs. And we will ensure that all components of our military are trained and equipped to defeat and demolish our enemies. You don't have to tell me the importance of the Guard 
and the reserve components. I know that not only are you vital to our national security and our total force, but specifically, there is no better National Guard than the Georgia National Guard. I'd like to share some words from the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Mark Milley, about the importance of the National Guard and the reserve components. He'll tell you that the Army specifically is not just the 10 divisions in the active, but we are 18 divisions, not 32 brigades, but 60. And most importantly, we are not 490,000 soldiers, we are 980,000. In General Milley's words, Every time I hear the word 490, I jump through the ceiling. If I hear the words 10 divisions, I lose my mind. It's one army, and we are not small. We're big. We're very capable. And we're very capable because of the reserves. We're capable because of the National Guard. End of quote. I share the Army Chief's beliefs. A total army concept is real, and our country relies on the National Guard and Reserve members now more than any time in our history. The days during which the Guard singularly served as a strategic reserve force are long gone. Rather, the Guard is and must continue to be an operational and combat reserve. In addition to the Army Chief of Staff's comments, let's look back to the founding of our country. If you remember at the Battle of Lexington and Concord, those first shots were not fired by the regular army, but by the National Guard. From the very start of our nation, the National Guard was ready to answer the call of the nation. This continues to this day, and I would now like to highlight some of the great accomplishments of the Georgia National Guard. Just this past month, the Georgia Army National Guard conducted a brigade-sized Joint Readiness Training Center rotation in Fort Polk, Louisiana. This consisted of more than 4,500 soldiers from the 48th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, supported by elements of the 648th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. The first time in nearly a decade, the National Guard completed a training rotation in order to train on core competencies, the decision-making processes, and logistical problem solving in a large-scale role-player scenario. This training was designed to not only get after Secretary Mattis's readiness priority, but was also designed to prepare the 48th Infantry Brigade Combat Team for a deployment in the very near future. Not only will the 48th Infantry Brigade Combat Team prepare to deploy in the coming months, but also elements of the 201st Regional Support Group the 78th Aviation Troop Command, and several others. They will deploy the combatant commanders around the world on a variety of mission sets. I thank all of you as you take on these upcoming missions. Additionally, the Georgia Air National Guard continues to prove that you are second to none. The 116th Air Control Wing, based at Robbins Air Force Base, called the Eyes of the Night, executes the Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System, which we call JSTARS. The 116th provides worldwide surveillance and command and control in addition to domestic support operations. Just this year, the 116th Air Control Wing received their 20th Air Force Outstanding Unit Award, more than any other Air Force unit. That deserves a round of applause. <clears throat> Since 9-11, JSTAR's air crew and maintenance personnel have been continuously deployed around the world. Our ground forces rely heavily on this capability, and their work continues to be a job well done. Now, I'd be remiss if I did not recognize our National Guard's vital support to our civilian authorities. I know that the citizens of Georgia can rely on your support in the event of floods, tornadoes, or any other emergency or disaster. We have and we know we can always count on you. 
The Georgia Guard continues to answer the call. The Georgia Department of Defense as a joint force supported response efforts during Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, Maria, and winter storm response efforts by providing more than 7,000 guardsmen. These guardsmen responded to over 85 Georgia Emergency Management Agency requests for assistance and supported county emergency management agencies throughout Georgia with law enforcement, debris cleanup, power generation, and relief supply and support operations. Your support on the home front comes outside of disaster situations as well. Members of the Georgia Air Guard and the Georgia Army Reserve <coughs> were part of the 419 service members that supported Operation Empower Health. This innovative readiness training took place in Savannah just a few weeks ago. During this exercise, these service members provided services on a large scale that provided no-cost medical, optical, dental, and veterinary services to nearly 8,000 citizens in the region. This training event provided nearly 20,000 training hours and more than $4.5 million in medical value to those communities. Exercises like these benefit the local communities greatly, as well as prepare our service members with vital military training. One last highlight I'd like to mention, the great accomplishments of the men and women of the Georgia National Guard is your work with our allies. Our allies and partners came to our aid after the terrorist attacks on 9-11 and have contributed to every major U.S.-led military engagement since. We cannot go at this alone, and this work adheres to our nation's most recent national defense strategy with regard to reaffirming our alliances. The Georgia Guard not only continues to maintain a strong relationship with the countries of Georgia and Argentina through the State Partnership Program, but also the Georgia National Guard service members participated in several vital exercises with our allies, including Noble Partner 17, which was a multinational involvement that included units from the U.S. Army Europe, as well as service members and equipment from Germany, Armenia, United Kingdom, Turkey, and Slovenia. The Georgia Guard also participated in Operation Sabre Guardian 17, another multinational exercise that covered Bulgaria, Hungary, <coughs> excuse me, and Romania. <coughs> the men and women of the Georgia National Guard continue to prove both globally and locally <coughs> that you are prepared to do whatever the nation asks. <coughs> Excuse me. I could go on with the great things that you've accomplished, <coughs> but I'd like to end with just a few things. <coughs> First, with the current strategic environment, I anticipate future demand for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in all corners of the world to increase. And in order to meet this demand, our senior military leaders will rely more heavily on the National Guard. Secondly, our nation owes our service members a debt of gratitude that can never be fully repaid. As co-chair of the Congressional Military Family Caucus, I continue to work to address the challenges that our military families face. Those challenges are perhaps even more unique to service members in the reserves and the Guard. Known as citizen soldiers, National Guard and Reserve members are private citizens who train for military duty in order to be ready to defend their state, their country, in times of emergency. You are the very definition of higher quality citizens, and I salute you for your service. I believe it's our duty to support the backbone of our fighting forces, the military family. Ultimately, military service is about people, and it's how we take care of those people and their families that will determine how well the most powerful 
and the most <coughs> devastating military force in the world uh, will be sustained into the future. We must always remember that it's not just the service member that chooses to serve, but it's also the family. Therefore, I will continue to work to ensure that our service members, their families, and veterans' voices are heard and that your concerns are addressed. I'm very proud of the vital role that Georgia's more than 11,000 Army and 3,000 Air Guardsmen play in defense of our nation. Your service uh, to the country is vital, and we count on you to be ready to answer the call either at home or abroad. Again, I'd like to salute the National Guard Association of Georgia uh, for your ongoing efforts in behalf of our National Guard. I'm proud to be your voice in Washington, and I pledge to always do my best for our veterans, our service members, and their families. If there's anything that I can do or my office or an issue that needs to be addressed, don't hesitate to contact me or my staff. Thank you. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless the United States of America. I have a hall too, if you need it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Congressman Bishop, on behalf of the association, uh, you know, I don't mind, you know, you are a friend of the Guard. And uh, as the Adjutant General said, you know, he is here every year. It doesn't have to be an election year. And he's always involved in military affairs, whether it be the Guard or down at Fort Benning. And that definitely uh, is noticed. And on behalf of the association, I present this coin to you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you.